Hi, I'm Susan Steinman. I'm the TL for Blaze on Mac here at Google. I'm John Cater. I'm the TL for the Platforms Project at Google. In our respective projects, we care a lot about builds that have actions with different requirements and making sure that Bazel behaves correctly with those various requirements. So we're going to talk to you about how that works both within Bazel itself and within your rule sets. And that is action configuration in Bazel. Hey, oh, that green button. All right. So <laughs> when we're talking about action configuration, let's start out with actions. So builds create a series of actions, and you can think of these as compile steps. So maybe you have a binary that's invoked, and it creates some output. That might be an action. And actions run in a particular environment, and we call that the execution platform. So Bazel used to assume that the execution platform was the same as your host platform, the host platform being where Bazel itself is running, and the execution platform being where the action is executing. And that's actually a problem, because you can imagine a situation where you're running Bazel on one platform but executing actions on another. So maybe you're running Bazel on your local Mac, but you're using remote execution on a Linux machine. So that's wrong, and it can lead to action failures. So now we have separate notions for these two platforms, your host platform and your exec platform. And we're going to be talking mostly about the exec platform. So that's where actions run. Some actions require um, particular you know, requirements to be met in order to run correctly. So maybe they need to run on a particular OS, or maybe they need extra memory. And we call these requirements constraints. And a platform is defined as a collection of constraints. They can be arbitrary, so you can define a set of constraints. You can define a platform that has or expresses those constraints. And um, Bazel will select the first platform that meets all of the constraints for a particular action. And notably, it might choose a different platform for different actions, right? So maybe one action says, I need to run on a Mac, and another action says, I need to run on Susan's favorite remote executor, and um, Bazel will select the platforms accordingly. And it'll fail if you don't um, tell Bazel that there's a platform available that meets those constraints. What does Bazel do with this platform? It does two major things. So it'll configure any prerequisite tools for that same platform. So say I need to run this action on Mac, and that action requires some binary that's going to be a tool input to that action. Uh, Bazel will build that binary for Mac because it's going to run on Mac. It's pretty nice. And it'll also set some execution properties. And those are sent to Bazel schedulers. And also, you know, if you have remote schedulers, those can be consumed there too. And when we talk about Bazel schedulers, that's the strategy system, if that um, rings a bell for you. So say I create an action that needs to be run remotely. You know, I have this remote constraint. Uh, Bazel will select a strategy that's remote. So now that you know about uh, what action configuration is, John's going to tell you about how you can express that within your rule sets. All right. Thank you, Susan. Um, so there's a bunch of different types of restrictions you can have on your execution platform, on your actions. There's really three main types that we kind of want to get into today. Um, the first one is really simple. Um, you might say that all the actions from this particular rule are going to have the same constraints. We're going to set that on the rule level. Um, or you might say that actually, you know, there's different sets of actions in this rule. Some of them have one set of constraints. Some of them have a different one. Um, and finally, there's always the case that maybe you, know, you don't care specifically about how these actions execute, but they have tools. And those tools have requirements on where they can run. So you care about your tool chains that you're going to use on these, with these actions for these rules. Uh, push the button. There you go. Um, so first, the really simple case. 
I want you guys to go for the simple case first. Don't reach for all the other tools until this one doesn't work. What happens when you don't do anything special? Um, you have a rule, you have a tool attribute on it, and you say CFG equals exec because that means configure this for the execution platform. In your implementation, you get that out, actions run tool. This picks the one execution platform for that action, it runs it there, it builds the tool for that platform, things should just work. Um, it's the simplest possible case, please consider this one first. But sometimes you know a little bit more that you need to encode into these rules. So you wanna say, actually, I know for whatever reasons, um, I, because of licensing issues, because of I only have this kind of thing in my environment and so it has to be there. I know that I actually want these actions to run on one thing. You say exec compatible with equals and then you give it a constraint. Not a platform, but a constraint. The platform is the collection of constraints. Constraints are what goes here. Um, how this works internally. When Bazel's looking, I've got all these execution platforms available, which one do I use? Bazel says, oh wait, this has to be compatible with Mac OS. Get rid of everything that's not Mac OS. We're going to ignore those and pretend they don't exist. And then we're going to pick the best one that's left. Um, and in this case, again, because you have CFG equals exec, the tool gets built for the execution platform. You're, when you run the action with that tool, it will get sent to there. It's using the default execution, execution group, if you're familiar with that. Um, the other big caveat is that some people will look at this and be like, oh, exec compatible with and target compatible with, those look really similar. I use those the same, right? You're wrong. Target compatible with checks the target platform when the rule gets configured and says, well, we already know what the target platform is. We, this rule has a target compatible with. Do they match? Yes, things are fine. No, oh, that's an error. Let's tell the user about it and stop things right now. Exec compatible with is a filter. It says, ignore any execution platform that doesn't match this constraint. Let's use one that's left. If there's nothing left, that's a different error, but it still functions internally very differently. Um, I'm actually gonna skip from the order I mentioned earlier and talk about tools because tool chains are near and dear my heart and they're also complicated. Um, so sometimes you have a set of tools that you wanna run that you need to, in order to execute your actions. Um, tool chains lets you decouple your rules from different sets of tools. The classic example of this is the CC tool chain. Um, I know some of you here are using Clang. Probably some of you here are still using GCC. I bet you there are people using Xcode or MSVC or any of a dozen different CC tool chains that are out there to build your C++ and your C code. Um, but we're sitting here on the Bazel team. I see the guys working on C++ rules over here. They don't wanna care if you're using Clang or GCC. So we have the CC tool chain which acts to separate those out and decouples them. Um, you can add your own tool chains. You can auto discover if you're using the auto discovery rules. You can get the CC tool chains that come with your remote execution environment if they've set that up for you. And then that lets Bazel go through and say, oh, well, we've got these different tool chains that are available. We know that we need a CC tool chain. Um, this target is using a CC tool chain. Let's figure out what's going to happen and switch that, stitch that together. Um, in the rule, it's fairly simple. You have this tool chains equals rule parameter that says, hey, I want a specific tool chain type. Uh, maybe that's at bazel colon slash slash cp, what, tool cpp toolchain type. The names are labels so that they can be fully analyzed, but that means they're long. I'm sorry about that. Um, in your implementation, you do ctx.toolchains, same toolchain type. You get out your per toolchain provider, and then you start pulling compilers, flags, libraries, whatever you happen to need out of that. Um, as a, a Bazel person working on the core, I don't actually know what's in that provider because the rule author is the one who defines it and they define it in the next slide. Um, so you have your specific tool chain provider you create. You create a rule that takes in a bunch of different attributes, processes them, puts them into that provider, makes them available. There's really two special things here for a rule that creates a tool chain. Um, the first one, oh, I'm gonna figure out, does the laser pointer work? Not in, not in yes, a useful way, it no. It's kind of there, but I can't see it and I'm on stage, so sorry. Um, in a toolchain rule, when you do CFG equals exec, that actually secretly means the execution platform of the rule that uses the toolchain. Toolchain rules should not ever create their own actions. Like, this actually, like, this, okay, secret here. If your toolchain creates an action, that's going to cause a huge internal crash, and you're probably gonna get some kind of a Java stack trace, and you're not gonna enjoy it. So don't do it, rule authors, just, just don't. Um, 
CFG equals exec means the execution platform on the rule that uses the toolchain. Um, the other interesting trick here is that this has to return a toolchain provider, a toolchain info provider. Um, that's what Bezos is looking for to figure out what am I going to actually provide to the rule in ctext.toolchains. Um, inside that, like so you see here, we're putting my toolchain equals info. If I go back a slide, you'll see here that it goes ctext toolchains, whatever, dot my toolchain. That's where that hooks up. That's how you get your specific provider out of that toolchain info provider. Um, and then the last part is just wiring everything up. How do you tell, Bla tell Bazel, hey, I've got these tool chains, let's use them. Um, the first thing you do is you need a tool chain type target. Like I said, tool chain type is a label. That means that you have to have an actual target there. Um, this gives us a lot of benefits. The most important one being that if you typo the name, you will get a, a nice, easy to comprehend, well, Bazel easy to comprehend error message, but one that you're used to. You know what happens when you see a message that says, I can't find this target, go look at this build file. Um, I'm pretty sure visibility checking works with that. I've never tested that. Um, that would be like a weird hack. I didn't do anything special for it. It probably works just like normal. Um, the other thing that you do, so you define like instances of your toolchain, you know, in this case, the my toolchain Linux impl, my toolchain Mac OS. And then you use the special toolchain rule to say, when you want to, when you're looking for a toolchain, um, you, and you're looking for something with a specific toolchain type, and these are the execution constraints, and these are the target constraints, and you can use this toolchain. Um, and that's how it will know, Bazel will know about all the different ones available and kind of filter through and figure out. Um, you have to register tool chains. We don't normally just load up random build files into memory and analyze them. Everyone hates that because it slows things down. So you have to actually register them so Bazel knows where to look. This is the register tool chains that you probably heard about. Um, there's a command line flag, extra tool chains that you can also use. Um, and that tells it which ones to use here. Um, and just, yeah, setting up your execution and your target constraints so that Bazel knows which ones to use based on what kind of build you're trying to do. Um, other thing though, what if not every platform has the right tools? Uh, say for example, you're setting up something to do some kind of like custom, you've got some kind of like custom hardware that you've got a special tool chain for that you're writing. Um, it's only ever gonna execute on Linux, there's no Mac version. What's gonna happen when somebody on their Mac laptop tries to do a build? Uh, well, if you just use the version I showed you on the previous slide, there, a couple slides, there we go, this version, then they'll get an error. No tool chain found, um, you know, try maybe try to do some debugging. But the other option is you can use optional tool chains. Uh, use slightly more complicated invocation. We just added this in Bazel 5.2. Um, but if mandatory is false and we can't find a tool chain, then we'll just say, okay, there's nothing there. And then your rule can check in ctext.toolchains, like, oh, I didn't get anything back. Um, I'm gonna use a default. Uh, I'm gonna print out a warning. I'm gonna give some kind of an error. I'm gonna depend on some other library instead. It's up to the rule author at that point. Like they can give very rule specific guidance, you know. Um, go talk to Bob and get him to set you up with this. Um, you need a license key there in filing cabinet 516. You as a rule author can decide how to handle that kind of situation. Um, and finally, getting back to different types of actions. Mention execution groups. Um, it's basically just a set of constraints that you can set on a per action level. So it lets you group up your actions into different sets. These actions can run anywhere. These actions only run on Linux. Um, so what, this is what you do when not every action is the same. My slides are not nearly as nice as Sarah's. She was much better at putting code on slides. Uh, my hat is off to her. I'm terrible at this, I apologize. Uh, but you can kind of see over here, we have a couple of different attributes, two different tools. Uh, one is CFG equals exec, and one is CFG equals config.exec Mac only. That refers to the execution groups that are defined down there. Every rule has a default execution group by default. Um, this one also has a Mac only execution group that's only compatible with Mac OS. When Bazel analyzes this target, it'll say, oh yeah, uh, so the default tool, um, I'm just gonna pick a default exec platform, whatever the highest priority one is. Uh, but for the Mac one, I have to pick, I have to build this on Mac. If that's a local Mac, great. If that's a remote like Mac executor, then my hat's off to you again for get dealing with licensing issues. Uh, but you can make that work. And when it builds those dependencies, it will build them properly to execute on that. But now you have to tell Bazel when you're creating the action, hey, you better go execute that Mac tool on a Mac. Which is why over here in the implementation, for the regular one, we just do the same CTX actions run, no problem. Uh, but for the special one, we have to say exec group equals Mac only in that action start run. And that's what tells Bazel, hey, this action is part of the Mac only exec group. It gets the Mac execution platform. 
It gets the execution properties that I set on that, and when we send it to you know, local host, remote, wherever it's going to be, it, those properties will, will forward there. So you have to make sure that the exec group here matches the exec group here in the configuration. Um, sometimes your exec group is in tool chains. We're getting into the weeds here. We're getting like the, the nitty gritty. Uh, but you can totally do that. You can say, Mac only exec group needs tool chains. It needs my special tool chain. And we have this complicated syntax. There's, there's help pages. We have links to the help pages early. You don't have to memorize anything here. Uh, but you can get out the tool chains from that. And aside from that, it's just like the tool chains and just like the exec groups. You're just doing them both together. Sometimes, though, things go wrong. What do you do when things go wrong? Well, the first thing you want to figure out is this action, I thought it was going to run on my particular execution platform. I got an error that says uh, Mac O binary not recognized. Wait, what is this? Um, what execution platform is this using anyway? Verbose failures is a great basal flag. When an action fails, it will give you a lot of information about the command line, the environment, and in this case, the execution platform. So you can look and say, hey, wait. I thought this was going to run on a Mac. I built it for a Mac. It appears to be running on Linux. What's up with that? And then you can start to look, go back and figure out where things went wrong. Um, the other, more slightly more complicated way, is you can use aQuery. Uh, if you're not familiar with aQuery, Bazel, aQuery, all the same flags for your build. And then a particular target will show you the actions for that target. Um, it works like query and cQuery. You can use depths. You can, um, I wouldn't use some path. That sounds terrible. But you can use like the standard you know, inclusion, exclusion operators, and really kind of narrow down like what are all of the actions this build is generating? What are the command lines? What are the inputs? What are the outputs? What's the execution platform? Where does Bazel think it's going to be running this? Because it's clearly not doing the thing you want it to do. That's why you're debugging. Um, and finally, when you are just like, I, I, I can see that it's running on the wrong execution platform. The action is doing the wrong thing. Why is that? Toolchain resolution debug equals a particular target. We'll show you some debugging output from the toolchain resolution process for that target. Toolchain resolution is where Bazel goes through and says, I want to build this target. I need these toolchains. I have these exec groups. What toolchain and what execution platforms am I going to use? The debugging output is not great. It's incredibly verbose and kind of hard to get through, but it is there and it'll help you narrow down, this is what's going wrong with, with my build. This is why this action isn't configured the way I thought that it should be. And now I'll hand it back over to Susan. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm really pleased with the improvements that have been made in this space in the past couple of years, but there are still areas for improvement. Uh, one of the things we're hoping to get better at is more complete cross-platform solutions. So right now, you can have a build that says, okay, these ex actions always execute on this platform, and these actions always execute on this other platform. And you can also have actions that you know, don't care, and Bazel will select the first platform, and it'll execute them there. But what you can't do is say, um, I would like to take advantage of dynamic execution. So try to run this action on this platform, and if it's too slow, fall through to local execution on a different platform. That's not possible. And there's a, a big use case for that because often you have a remote build system that maybe is Linux, and it, it's fast if you have cache hits, but your local machine is something different, and it's fast if you have to actually execute something so you don't need to do all the file transfers. So right now, dynamic execution only works if those two platforms are the same, but we'd like to make it possible for actions that really don't care what platform they run on and where the outputs are gonna be comparable to take advantage of dynamic execution. And relatedly, it would be really great if, if you know that the outputs are going to be the same on two different platforms, if you could take advantage of shared caching across those platforms. So things we're thinking about. Um, we'd also like to make Bazel's scheduler platform aware. So what does that mean? Uh, I mentioned that Bazel's scheduler is the strategy situation. And platform aware is all this stuff that we've been talking about. So right now it's possible to configure an action for a particular platform and then to have its strategy route it somewhere else. 
So I say, oh, this action is a Linux action. It's configured. All the tools are for Linux. Its exec properties are for Linux. And then I can mess everything up by setting a strategy for that action that says, oh, I'm a Mac action. So it'd be great if these two systems could talk to each other and you could kind of have one source of truth. And hopefully that'll be the, the platform's way of expressing things. And uh, John mentioned many ways that you can debug your toolchain and action configuration, but it would be great if we had even more there. Um, so that's also in progress. Hey. Oh, if you have questions, you can't ask them here. Uh, you should find us at the uh, office hours room. John has a table. That side in the back near the entrance. And we'll go there right now. And I'll leave this slide up while I talk. You can find a lot of documentation about all of this stuff. The APIs are confusing at first glance. So there's a lot of um, examples out there and a lot of uh, information about how this all works. Thank you so much. Thank you.